Hey Forum, my name is Manny, aka Cascade Scents. Welcome to another video. Like the title says, this one is on expensive fragrances that are actually worth it. And I'm really excited to do this video for you because if you know anything about this channel or if you've been here before, you would know that my taste tends to lean expensive. There's stuff that I'll tend to buy just because I really, really like it, but some not as worth it more than others. But there are other ones that are very much worth it, if not near worth it to the point where I would have no problem paying the retail asking price. So that's what this video is about. There are fragrances here that I definitely paid retail for and or maybe just a little bit under retail, so a little bit discounted. So don't expect to find any discount fragrance favorites here just because a lot of the stuff here doesn't have that much distribution, hence there's not a big chance for it to find itself on discount websites. So I guess I take pride in also having a little bit more exclusivity than the next person, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. That being said, if steals are more your steal, I did make a video recently on my favorite cheap summer fragrances, so I'll leave that in a card somewhere up there. So kindly check that out after this video, but without further ado, we might as well count down from my least expensive to my most expensive fragrance that I actually think are worth it, that each of them are still rather pricey. So to start us off at 120 US dollars for a 50 ml presentation, this is a collaboration between Monocle and Comme des Garçons, and it's their fourth one. This one is called Yoyogi. Now the inspiration for Yoyogi itself is the Yoyogi Park in Shibuya, Tokyo. So when you spray this stuff, you're supposed to get a whole lot of greens evocative of that city park. So we're talking Japanese cypress, we're talking freshly cut grass. So picture yourself taking a jog through the park itself on a really nice crisp morning. As it starts to calm, you have this more herbaceous aspect from the chamomile. Feels very soothing and calming. Kind of like chamomile tea if you've ever had that. Followed with a deeper green of wormwood, which has a little bit of an intoxicating quality to it. And I'm sure some of my brothers in the south here would know what I mean by that if you've ever had something like absinthe before. So altogether, this right here is just a green lover scent. And if you do quote unquote love green fragrances in pretty much all aspects, because I feel like there's most of them in this scent, then I think this scent is worth it for you as well. And with that being said, I have to give Monocle and Comme des Garçons real credit for this one, just because the Comme des Garçons style is typically very synthetic. Sometimes it's done to be in your face because they are trying to drive the point to you as far as its storytelling. It could be too overt for some people where it actually hurts their nose and sometimes it's a little bit rough around the edges. But I must say this one is really not that. It feels ever so natural to me. And if you don't believe me, I actually have the receipts for this because in February 2020, earlier this year, I was there with the boys and some of our loved ones. But nonetheless, we are capturing that essence right there in the flesh and just felt really good just to be on a walk on the grounds of a place with so much history and so much aroma that someone like me as a fragrance head would also appreciate too. And then to furthermore appreciate it with this is just absolutely incredible. So of course, I do have a little bit more sentimental bias with this scent, but I actually bought this scent even before I went on that trip. If anything, it actually sold me on trying to go to that trip, trying to make that walk with the boys even more. So if you're really into that, a scent that really imitates reality, reality imitating art, art imitating reality, whatever, whatever, definitely check this out if you have yet to. 120 buckaroos for ultra realistic scent that you're not gonna smell like much other people with. To me, that's great designer value. So it's none other than Yoyogi by Monocle ex Comme des Garçons for the win. Now moving on to another expensive fragrance that I think is also worth it. And this fragrance at 112 euros slash around 125 US dollars is this. Dior en Parfum by Christian Dior. So just so you know, this is actually being phased out in its 75 ml form and being upgraded to 100 ml presentation and that one alone. We're talking 121 euros in that form, but after reading a few Fragranico reviews, uh, more often than not, people are saying that it is relatively the same, but if anything, I'm telling you to find this version right here at 75 mls if you can at retail, if not just under or over that, because of course it's the one I'm definitely sure of. And to me, this is with without a doubt, the greatest Dior Homme fragrance ever. I mean, mind you, it wouldn't exist if it weren't for Dior Homme Tons and or Dior Homme before it, but to take that iris makeup-y DNA and tone down the sweetness behind it in place for something a little bit more masculine with leather backbone behind it with a little bit of ambrette, I just think smells regal. It's just a very distinguished scent that I just think is evocative of just the most upstanding gentleman. I must say though that if you are not an iris lover and or something that leans powdery, definitely stay away from the scent. But again, that one saving grace is the leather. And I do get a lot of it here off my skin. It feels almost just as aggressive as the 
actual iris itself. And that's actually a good thing, again, if you're wanting something that's a little bit more masculine. For him, I just think it's incredible. And I really feel like if it came down to it when it came to just designers and or niche scents that I would be forced to keep of maybe like five to 10 of them, I can't see me parting ways with this whatsoever. I think it's that special and I'm glad I have it in its initial form. That being said, I know this is a fragrance that has been known to pop up on discounters in the past. But at this point, again, if you do see it for just under, if not just over retail, I would definitely pull the trigger. If not, I will. I don't mind stocking up on this. Trust me, I'm just super apprehensive about Dior en Parfum in its new form with that being potentially reformulated because you know how Dior do. I will give Dior credit for this though, because usually if they are reformulating something, they will actually tell you about it. You know, with how many times that they've done that to Dior Homme and or Dior Homme Sport. But just like this one right here in the new version of Dior Homme Parfum, the one thing I definitely do know about it is that it's not going to debut elsewhere outside of Europe. It will remain a European exclusive and to my knowledge towards the end of this thing's run's tenure, this was actually only endemic to France and not the rest of Europe in the last maybe year or so. Although I must say that I've seen it in duty freeze in Italy and Portugal as recently as a year and change ago, to be honest. I probably would have picked more of this up if I just felt like carrying more stuff. I just didn't. Now I feel furthermore gutted, great. But yeah, I think you furthermore know what it is and this might be the last time I talk about this scent in its form right now, but it doesn't mean we should forget it. That's why I'm reminding all right now. Here it is again. It's Dior en Parfum by Christian Dior. Moving on to the third expensive fragrance that I feel like is worth it. This one retails for 128 US dollars for a 50 ml presentation. It's the newest ombre leather by Tom Ford. When I say newest, I mean the second iteration of this scent in this new bottle and not ombre leather 16, which was initially a limited edition private blend Tom Ford fragrance. But the reason why this is worth it at the retail level in my personal opinion is that you're getting nearly half price off for the scent for as much juice in just a different style of bottle, which I actually still like. Don't get me wrong, when it comes to high-end designer fragrances and or a little bit above that in something like the Private Blend Collection bottles, I don't think anything beats the 50 ml presentation of those things. But I do really like this bottle and how it is very evocative of the scent inside. We're talking a very austere, straightforward, black, almost jet black leather jacket of a scent. So you're not getting a whole lot of evolution, but we're talking a lot of longevity and projection. It's a total bad boy scent and to be honest, in retrospect, when I do wear this, I do actually like wearing it when I'm not actually wearing leather myself. I don't really wear a lot of leather anyway, so it's whatever. And I guess I low-key like to compensate for that with wearing this because it just makes me feel that much more badass. So if you were to take some of the warmer facets out of Tuscan leather and or the fruitier aspects and you just wanted something, again, a little bit more straightforward, I would say it's this. But for real, how much do you want off of this fragrance? Estee Lauder slash Tom Ford already did you a solid by bringing this fragrance back from the grave from 2016 and is already giving you almost half off for it. For me, that is more than good enough. So with that being said and the reasons I already aforementioned, that's why this fragrance makes a list. So once again, it's it's Ombre Leather by Tom Ford for the win. Now for moving on to the next fragrance, and this half of the video is going to be more niche fragrances rather than the high-end designer fragrances that we're done talking about as far as this first half of the video. So to kick off this second half of the video niche-wise, it's a 60 ml presentation for 160 US dollars, and it's this, Squid by Zoologist Perfumes. Now Zoologist Perfumes is known for their very picturesque fragrances as far as channeling the animal's habitat that the fragrance is based off of into a fragrance itself. So for example, bats kind of like a bat cave, T-Rex smells kind of like scorched earth. And while those fragrances are beautiful and picturesque in their respective ways, sometimes they might not come off as the most wearable, but to find one with what I thought was a very mystical inspiration, but at the same time, notes wise look kind of harmless as far as the environments I'm going to put myself into. I was just that furthermore excited for this fragrance's release. So when it came to pre-ordering it, I jumped on it first thing and I love it. I think squid is absolutely amazing. Like it really feels like a denizen of the deep lives somewhere like this smells. Salty, but not too salty, dark, but not too dark. And as a result, you have a little bit more of that watery aspect coming out at you too. Not in a bulgari aqua kind of way or a Creed Rolfa kind of way, nothing too accessible like that. More of a, I'm going to die if I am diving how many meters deep kind of way. Yeah, it just feels very ominous, but I am very enthralled by that. Add a little bit of benzoin too, it feels a 
little bit more intoxicating as a result. And I just think it's perfect for what it is. Again, it just checks the boxes off for what I want as far as the storytelling and its execution that way. And it's somehow wearable enough for me, especially not exactly now, but if we're going to get into the later days of the summer, we're talking early to mid September. I think this is perfect weather for this scent right here. To me, that's squid and I love it for that. I just think that's a beautiful time to be wearing fragrances because you can wear something that's a little bit more fleeting in the daytime. And when it starts to get darker out, you're wearing something that feels somewhat still refreshing, but a little bit more appropriate at the same time without being too warm per se. So again, because of that use, because of that storytelling, because of the execution, because of the versatility, that's why I feel like this fragrance is worth it for me. Again, it is Squid by Zoologist Perfumes for the win. Moving on to the next fragrance that I personally feel like is worth it. Here we go. It comes from a brand that is also somewhat controversial, at least when it comes to the perfume world circles. Don't get me wrong, casuals love this brand, but some of y'all watching who are definitely quote unquote perfume heads might find that these guys are a little too simple, but I don't care. I feel like they nailed simplicity right here in this offering. And at 192 US dollars, here it is at 50 mLs it's another 13. So what can I say about another 13 by La Labo? I definitely feel for me as far as my skin chemistry, when it comes to a really, really fuzzy and or musky ISOE Super offering, I just feel like this is the best one. And then if we were to take a look at stuff like Santal 33, I feel like it's weirdly too vegetal when it comes to its take on sandalwood. That and it's too much of a beast in my daily situations and I just don't wanna be the guy at my workplace who just walks around in that scent because I smell Santel 33 a lot in downtown Toronto, believe it or not. I know New York claims that scent, but I guess we're starting to claim it too. But when it comes to something that's subdued enough, kind of like a guy at 10, but not too subdued, and when it comes to something that's still a head turner, I feel like this right here is definitely the perfect medium. So again, characterized mainly by that ISO E super note. Yes, ISO E super is one of those aroma chemicals out there that can be manipulated to smell like different kinds of wood. It can lean woody, ambery, musky. Here, it's a little bit of everything. Again, I can't scream enough about how quote unquote balanced this fragrance is, how there's really no harsh edges. But add some synthetic clean, clean white musk on top of this. I just feel like it radiates off your skin further more beautifully. And again, altogether, I just feel like it's a perfect minimalist scent for the modern day young urban professional, the modern day anyone who doesn't want to think too hard when they smell a fragrance that they're wearing. That being said, there's a lot of fragrance heads out there, which I can empathize with as far as not feeling much for a scent like this or maybe Labo in general. I feel like Labo does a good job of quote unquote making signature scents. And I feel like when you do smell them, they're more evocative of the person wearing it rather than emotions or situations on a whim that will make you feel this sort of way. You know, in contrast to something outdoorsy like this in Yoyogi or something as badass like this in Ombre Leather, this stuff is just minimalist and a daily wear and dare I say it hipster. So not everyone's cup of tea, but if you like compliments, because believe Believe it or not, you're gonna get them with this. If you like minimalism, if you like a daily wear, I don't think you can go wrong with this despite the high price point. So it will be worth it if you do use it. So definitely check this out if you have yet to. It's a formerly exclusive, another 13 by Lalabo for the win. And last but not least, here we go at 260 US dollars for a 75 ml presentation. This is my like Mercedes Benz type scent. And when we're talking Mercedes Benz, I'm talking AMG or better. That's how strongly I feel about this scent as far as how it makes me feel. So here we go. It is Angelique Noir by Guerlain. Like if Dior en Parfum is my preferred fragrance for just an esteemed night out, this right here in Angelique Noir to me is more of a milestone fragrance, like a work anniversary or you received a promotion or maybe you're proposing to a loved one, or maybe you're experiencing an anniversary with them too. You know, something really, really special and landmark like that. That's to me, what is Angelique Noir. To channel those celebratory vibes, we're talking a lot of powder as well. So to get that effect, we're talking something a little bit more aromatic rather than maybe floral. The Angelica in the form of Angelica seeds is definitely going to do that in the opening. So it just feels like it's kind of hitting your face. Give it a little bit more of a kick with that pink peppercorn as well, I just think it is very regal. But once this starts to calm down more, you get a little bit of that jasmine, but again, you're not getting something too white florally or florally before ultimately settling into vanilla, which I feel like almost everyone loves. But it's not just any vanilla. A lot of people prefer vanillas that kind of drip off of them. We're talking either boozier takes on vanilla or more gourmand takes on vanilla. So I must say that this to me is definitely not that, and that's why I love it. It's more of a drier take on vanilla. And with how it's blended with the more aromatic elements here, 
it feels like it's a more drier powder. And I think that's way more glamorous and evocative of something I'd want for, again, those promotions, those anniversaries, things like that. Maybe New Year's Eve and or a Christmas dinner. You're trying to celebrate with this stuff. It's not an everyday kind of thing remotely. Again, it's just one of those scents that I smell like I am someone, regardless of how I previously felt upon spraying this stuff right here. So try this exclusive Guerlain wherever you get a chance, wherever your nearest exclusive Guerlain flagship retailer, I guess, is. And I must say, maybe in the last 20 years, it might be the best, at least for me from the brand. And yeah, I'm trying to think of what else to say about this, but I've mentioned it so many times over the years, so I think I'm done for now. Again, it's Angelique Noir by Guerlain for the win. But there it is, Forum. Hopefully you enjoyed my list on expensive fragrances that I actually think are worth it. Again, a lot of this is mainly on the retail level. I didn't get much of a discount on any of these fragrances. Again, if not at all. Again, I like the exclusivity of getting the customer service experience. And if you also roll that way, you have no problem supporting art that you also love. Admittedly, if you can get any of this stuff on the low, do it. But again, if you can't, at least get the experience, get the samples, get the points, blah, 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 whatever. By this point in the video, I want to know where you stand. How do you feel about the fragrance retail experience? And how do you feel about it going forward, pandemic and post-pandemic on? And also tell me if there's a fragrance that you think I miss as far as an expensive fragrance that you also think is actually worth it at its retail price. So please let me know in the comments. Can't wait to see what you guys have to say. And yeah, I think that about does it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, if you really enjoyed yourself, please subscribe if you've yet to. It helps me and it helps you, I guess, if you really want to get this kind of content furthermore of. And if you really, really, really enjoyed this video, also consider hitting the notification bell so you extra, extra won't miss anything in the near future. But yeah, until then, now, now that about does it. Thanks again for the ongoing support. Take care for now. Peace out. Bye. Wear your fragrances.